entertainment. At GTP, we bring you the best of Gambian creativity right to your doorsteps. Sell your products and services to millions of Gambians and friends of the Gambia via our online radio, TV and newspaper. Advertise your business and watch your clientele grow like never before. Our content from the Gambia gets the diaspora hooked up to our screen whilst those in Gambia love what we bring for them from afar. This gives us a unique edge and separates us from the rest. If you want to be heard or seen by the world, contact GCP. We tap, nurture and promote Gambian talents and businesses. Think promotion, think GTP. For all your event coverages, religious gathering, naming ceremonies, weddings, documentaries, music videos, TV and radio commercial and more. We also do design and print jobs of all types, logos, business cards, brochures, flyers, t-shirts, coffee mugs, banners, billboards, catalogs, and magazines. We also do lamination and projector rentals. We are the first Gambian non-profit online public broadcasting network with over 300,000 active followers across all social media. Contact GTP on 750 3654 3654 or 794-9214-794-9214-404-593-6215 or email us at gambiantalents at gmail.com GCP, the people's power, power. We greet you with the best of greetings, that is the greeting of peace. We say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all of you. Uh, firstly, we want to thank all the media houses for answering to our call. Yet again, another APRC presser. Despite your busy schedules, as a party, um, we believe in working with the media directly and quite honestly with open all our doors to the media and you've always responded to our call we definitely want to thank you for that and as usual we'll have the proper press conference after which we'll have question and answers as we normally do we're open to any type of questions um, but all we want is for questions not to be repeated and we'll give access and opportunity to every media house to raise their concerns any questions they have and will answer to the best of our ability. So without wasting much time and without much ado, we definitely want to go into the press conference <coughs> proper. And uh, once again, we welcome you all uh, to yet another APRC press conference. Uh, it is of great honor and pleasure that all the time we share with the media whatever information we have. And for you to disseminate what information is giving to you for the public out there. So, the Right Honorable Al Haji Fabakari Tombong Jata, uh, he will lead you through this press conference. Honorable, the floor is all yours. Aujj Billahi Mina Shaitan Rajim, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Let me seize this opportunity to thank our deputy spokesperson and secretary for coordinating this press conference and uh, to welcome the various media houses here in present for responding to our call. We appreciate and acknowledge it. 
I will also want to thank the APRC National Executive Committee, all APRC members and sympathizers, both here and the diaspora, and indeed all Gambians. I send you all our sincere greetings. I want to make a preamble to the press conference I want to make it abundantly clear that we, the membership of the Alliance for Patriotic Reorientation and Construction, are God-fearing. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are true to our conscience. We are disciplined and we have respect for authority. But make no mistake, we, because of those qualities or those characteristics, we cannot be cowed down by anybody or any force, both here and outside. We are resolute. and would fight hard to defend our rights and dignity. And that we are more determined now than ever before to surmount all obstacles on our way to achieve what we want. the so-called political commentators and human rights activists, like Nyan Jang and uh, Madi Jobate. Who, for reasons best known to them, will make remarks against ourselves and our leadership and our people and make no and expect no response from anybody. This cannot be tolerated. Madi Jobate in passing, who represents the West Minister in trying to ensure democracy and rule of law, we all know, is partisan in all his endeavors ever since for the past 20 something years he clothes himself in a wolf's clothing and expect that he can say and do anything without response to the extent that they were reporting my first deputy to the police and even demanding from police to call him for question as if they are the the be-all and the end-all of everything. Let nobody, let nobody take us for granted. Let nobody take our discipline, our respect for granted. I said we are Gambians, we are God-fearing, we are disciplined. We don't want any problems in the country. But don't take us for a ride. I will make a special comment. Instead of Usman Rambo, I will my take myself take the lead in dissecting what these people are doing and exposing them and even asking them we will do anything possible to respond equally or more to whatever they do. That has to be made clear. We 
as a party are dictated by our conscience and the wish, the wishes and aspirations of our party members and indeed our beloved country, the Gambia. The focus of today's press conference is the ruling of the Gambia Court of Appeal that is M.A. Garafi versus the Attorney General the subsequent response by the Attorney General and our position so far that's the focus that will not limit you from asking any other question that we might have left out. As Dudu said, we don't close down. People may ask any questions they want to ask. And we will do our best to answer all the questions. Now, I want to make a contrast as to what, what the key ingredients of the judgment versus the response of Attorney General Batambedu versus who is Batambedu. We must look at it from that perspective. To this end, before I go into the details, I want you, the med various media houses, to make your judgments and those listening. I would just want to read what Batambedu. His response to the judgment, just some quotes from it. I will go into the judgment and now now lay out who Batambedu is. He said, Meanwhile, consistent with the government's strong commitment to respect for rule of law, all sale of properties flowing from the Ghana Commission recommendations have now been suspended in difference to the ruling of the Court of Appeal until the final pronouncement is made. But he said this. He said, the government notes that different interpretations of the ruling are being offered by many, including sections of the media. The government wishes to clarify to the general public that the Gambia Court of Appeal did not in any way, did not in any way state that the Ghana Commission recommendations cannot be enforced. Did not state in any way that the Ghana Commission recommendations cannot be enforced. Rather, in a departure from long-established practice in this jurisdiction, the Court of Appeal held that an additional legal step needs to be taken by the executive in order to execute some, and not all, of the recommendations of the Commission of Enquiry, such as the Ghana Commission. Indeed, the Gambia Court of Appeal has accepted in the same ruling that the position that the position arrived at by the court in this matter is a novel. The government, however, disagrees with this position by the Court of Appeal and intends to further litigate this matter. And uh, he concluded by saying, by attempting, the new Gambia is committed to the principles of good governance and rapidly gaining recognition around the world as a bastion of democracy and a judicial independence. These are the words of Batambedu. It is the same judgment we all read. Let's make comparisons. In, this, in the judgment, Justice Njai said, a commission of inquiry does not and legally cannot make a judgment. 
a commission of inquiry does not and legally cannot make a judgment. Very clear words. In other words, he continued, a commission of inquiry cannot legally render a binding decision which may be executed or enforced as it were a judgment or order. Cannot make it a binding decision or enforce it as if it were a judgment, that's a court giving judgment or an order from the court. But Ambedu said the judgment did not say that. Justin Jai further said the adverse findings and recommendations of the Commission of Inquiry is, are merely advisory and not conclusive and binding. The adverse recommendations are mere recommendations and not conclusive, neither binding. Justice Njai, in his judgment, weighed against what Batambedu said. He further noted that the Commission of Inquiry is part and parcel of the executive and not part of the judiciary, thus not an adjudicating body. Commission of Inquiry is part of the executive. It has nothing to do with the legislature or the judiciary. And therefore, it's only the, ju the judiciary that can make judgments that can be enforced and executed, or orders. This is what they are saying. The appeal court quoted and relied on a Supreme Court judgment, Fayal Ghanim versus the Attorney General, with the, with the Chief Justice sitting, that's Asan B. Jallo, the current Chief Justice. And Justice Jallo, Asan Jallo said, stated that a commission of inquiry is not a law-making body. It has no legislative powers and that does not fall within the legislature. This is before a previous case that this judgment relied on. This, this was also stated and this had not been a guidance to Batambedu, Attorney General and Chief Legal Advisor to Government. Justice Jallo further said in that judgment that a commission of inquiry is an investigative fact-finding body which makes findings and recommendations that are subjected to the approval of government. Legal judgments are not subject to approval of the president or the executive. This is Asangalo's judgment in a different case earlier on. Justice Njai of the Appeal Court said, Consequently, my view is that the advice findings or recommendations of a commission of inquiry cannot be executed or enforced they are not judgments or orders of an adjudicating body. Cannot. This is what he said. But just, I just read it for you when he said, that's not what the judgment said. I think he's reading another document from, from Mass. You see, we are at a stage that no one person can fool Gambians. We must recognize that. If mistakes are made, we must accept our mistakes as human beings. But in the execution of our, of our duties, we must put away emotions and sentiments. The government white paper, Njai said about the government white paper, a white paper does not certainly emanate from the commission of inquiry. It's got, it emanates from government. And it is as a result, not part of the report of the Commission of Inquiry. It is not legislative. It, is not leg it has no legislative character and is certainly not a judgment or order of a court. That's a white paper. Certainly not a judgment or an order of a court. And only the court has those jurisdictions. 
Justice Ngai finally said, if following the publication of a report of a commission of inquiry, together with any advice findings and recommendations, the executive intends to impose any penalty to any person adversely mentioned, the executive must, quote, the executive must, must take the requisite court actions, whether civil or criminal, in order to have those penalties enforced. And the recommendations are done. It goes to government, and government wants to act. The judgment is that they cannot do anything. If they want to go further, they should resort to the courts. But Tambedu misled us. I quote him again. The government wishes to clarify that the general public, that the Gambia Court of Appeal did not in any way state that the Ghana Commission recommendations cannot be enforced. Comparisons. I've just read two of them to you. And then he went further to state, Batambedu, that what the Commission said is government can go to another level of to going to court. Then why should government stop selling, this, selling the properties? I, I beg that question. And the Justin Jai finally concluded, just concluding now. He said, the 1997 Constitution and other laws of the Gambia do not provide for the suffering of liabilities by persons against whom advice findings are made by commissions of inquiry. Justice Nyai, I read again, the 1997 Constitution and other laws of the Gambia do not provide for the suffering of liabilities by persons against whom adverse findings are made by the Commission of Enquiry. It cannot just be automatic. Commission says this, you go and implement it. These are what we are, where we are today. Various reactions came out. Key amongst them is Alma Metal. We all know Alma is a lawyer by profession, but a disappointment by all standards. <laughs> Alma, I quote him, just a person. Attorney General should not have suspended the sale of properties and assets belonging to former President Yaya Jammeh and others, despite the appeal court ruling. Reasons. This is just one case. Every other case will be subjected to the same scrutiny. What he was trying to say is, this is Ghanem versus Attorney General, and therefore, uh, if it comes to Yajame or Fabakari, we should wait for that. If a lawyer can talk to Gambians in that sense, I, I, I will be most disappointed for any Gambian to seek for any legal advice from that person. I'm not a lawyer, but I challenge him on this issue. The ruling states Categorically, not the, 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 the Commission of Inquiry cannot enforce orders on Ghanim. He said he cannot enforce orders on any Gambian. The last portion of what I read to you, I said, he said was that the 1997 Constitution and other laws of the Gambia do not provide for the suffering of liabilities of persons against whom advice findings have been found against. These are very clear statements. But they are out to mislead Gambians. They are vicious, they are emotional, and they are full of sentiments. Why? I will give you reasons. Since President Jame left the source of this country. Yourselves, you will see the narration. And all these things, I must sadly say, 
that even some media houses are complicit. Because your, your key role is to inform factually, without bias, without emotions, without your lineages, political lineages, to the public. If you are investigative, you can make analysis. I remember, Andre I don't know whether you have it ready. Yes. Sometime last year, some time ago, myself and Dudu had a, uh, uh, a program on iTV, I, I Africa, TV. I Africa TV. Mm. And I said this. I said, it is illegal for the Commission of Inquiry to effect sales of President Gamme's properties, especially his cattle and vehicles. Nobody listened. It was not even an issue. You know, the issues we raise, just once, it just comes out one person, you don't hear it again. And people belabor issues. There are a lot of things happening in this system that for me, I cannot ever imagine those things happening in our, during our time. The adage here is, APRC and Yajame, human rights violations. In every form. But is that all in governance? Is that all in governance? When people have prepared people's minds, have their program to detract people from current issues so that they will openly be looting the assets of Gambians, thus leading us into acute poverty and despair. This is what is happening. I will ask Dudu to play that, to confirm that. We will come. Now, we go, go, I'll now ask the question. Why were A.G. Attorney General Bartambenu and his, and his cohorts? BC on the spare campaign against APRC, Yaya Jamme, for that matter, since former President Jamme left the source of this country. And I ask for us all listening, if I don't, if I if I am lying, you can say it in your papers. I'm saying that the main reason was to distract us, Gambians, focus us on Yaya Jame, his killings, his looting, APRC, how bad we are, whilst they are looting civilizedly our resources, enriching themselves, playing on the minds of Gambians. I will prove it. We all know that Ba Tambedu professes himself to be a human rights lawyer, a human rights activist, and a gentleman who wants to ensure there is democracy, rule of law. That's what he always pronounces. Verbal, what he talks about. You are assessed not by what you say, but by why, what you do. Taking that as a cue, I believe that Attorney General Bartambedu is a blot on this coalition borough government. Just like if you take white sheet and you drum charcoal or, or ink on it, it's a blot on it for many reasons. And therefore, he does not have the moral compass. Because of the reasons I will adduce, Bartambedu does not have the moral compass to talk about President Yame or APRC as to our bad deeds. You cannot be a criminal, more criminal than us, and you want to talk, tell us you are criminals. A thief telling a thief you are a thief. <laughs> we would not tolerate that. Now, let's focus on that. If you remember, in the Yankuba Baji trial, Batambedu appointed his brother. Serif Tambedu. 
And if you recall, Yankuba Bagi's wife was able to record his brother in their private discussions. That blew out and Sri resigned. Honestly, if I were a Batembedu, I, I have the guts to appoint my brother. Honestly, I would resign. Ba stayed, stayed put, and he's the champion of rule of law and democracy and human rights. He stayed. Nobody, people never bothered about that. We are aware the passport scandal. But Badu is the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, at the same time the chief legal advisor to the executive, basically to President Adam Abaro. We all know the scam, passport scam. Level when Gambian passport, Gambian diplomatic passport is just like a tissue paper. Ba decided to get passport for his, for his wives, his mother, stepmothers, sisters, and all these things. And he said, when he was telling, he said his mother cannot walk and all these things. When he's going to Mecca, he needs assistance. As, as if you, your mother, my mother, as old as they may be, are not Gambians and do, do, don't deserve that. But that aside, Presso mounted on him, and then he decided to return the passport. He said, in fact, I am not the approving authority. I only applied, and President Adam Abaro approved it. Now, shifting responsibility from himself now to Adam Abaro. Batambedu. Who knows best than Batambedu, a legal man, to know how diplomatic pass is issued? Who knows the laws more than that person? Even if President Barrow approves it, he is, he is better positioned to know who and not who to give the passports to. See, we have reached a stage when you are confronted with facts. For us to move forward, we must accept facts and correct the mistakes and move forward. We cannot constantly